So I want to keep my remarks very brief to give as much time as we can, although it'll still be limited to uh, each of our speakers. Uh, this is the, the first pillar. We have a series of pillars in the IDE that focuses on uh, particular areas. And this one is around productivity, employment, and inequality. We define that very broadly. But let me, let's just dive right in with our first speaker, uh, Arima Itsima, and she's going to be talking about some fascinating work that uh, she's been doing with George Westerman uh, at Mass Mutual, looking at how people uh, spend their time at work. Um, what are they doing in terms of on the web? Are they, are they surfing? Are they doing productive work? Are they doing something else? Uh, she's got some great data with, that she can weigh in on that. So please join me in welcoming Irina Itsima. There was a, oh, yeah, I think it's picking me up. Thanks for the, uh, for the introduction. So um, George and I have not been looking at time use and how productive time use is of uh, claims examiners at MassMutual. So the idea being that I'm sure we've all been there. You quickly check your Facebook updates and you end up commenting on, on one of the posts. You end up liking one, then you end up checking out a cat video and another. And before you know it, half an hour is gone while you're supposed to be working. So we're really interested in how this impacts productivity of workers and how this time use and productivity responds to changes in, in workload. So that's what I'd like to tell you something about today. So we know that workers don't just work while they're on the job. Workers also check their emails, they make personal calls, they check their Facebook, um, and we know that there's actually quite a significant amount of, of time that people spend doing these, these leisure activities while on the job. So from a 2014 survey by Career Builder, we know that, for instance, 21% of the respondents admitted that they spend about at least an hour a day browsing the internet for leisure. And they spend about a similar amount of, of time making personal calls, writing personal emails. So this is a rather significant amount of time that people spend not necessarily working while on the job. So as I said, we're interested in trying to figure out how this affects productivity and how workers change the way they use their time at work when workload varies. So we're looking at four margins of adjustment of time use and productivity in response to changes in workload. And the first one is simply, well, when workload goes up, people could simply work longer hours. They could work overtime. They could cut back on the, the number of hours of leave that they take. So they simply are at work for a longer, uh, a longer time period. And this might increase productivity. But there's a second margin. People could simply also surf less and work more, browse the internet less, and, and do more productive work. So this is what we think of as more of an inframarginal adjustment. So of every hour that someone spends on the job, they spend more time actually working and consuming less leisure time. And again, this might increase output. A third margin of adjustment is, well, of this time that people spend actually working and not browsing the internet, people could improve the efficiency with which they do their job. So for example, and this is where technology might also come in, instead of just trying to figure out a, a problem that they're running into while they're at work, they could just quickly um, send an email to a knowledgeable colleague or um, just I am a knowledgeable colleague and ask for some help. So do we see that people, that work has become more efficient about the way they go about their work, especially when workload is high? And finally, there's a, a fourth margin of adjustment, and that's that workers could front load some of the work when they know that a particularly busy time is, is coming up. So when they anticipate that workload will be high, do we see that workers start to work ahead so that they get ahead of the curve for a little bit? So we're studying all these kinds of responses to changes in workload and, and how people might vary the way that they use their time while on the job using data from uh, insurance claims examiners at Mass Mutual. We're looking at two of their departments, uh, the Life and Annuities Department and the Disability Insurance Department. And we look at, we have very detailed big data about time use of um, employees and their productivity. 
And with that data, we're trying to really look at the margins of adjustment of these workers, of their time use and their productivity in response to workload. And here the setting, so looking at insurance claims examiners, is particularly useful because on the one hand, workload varies a lot. It, and you'll see that in a, in a second, workload changes a lot from one week to the next. Because in some weeks, there is a whole bunch of new claims coming in that claims examiners need to, de need to deal with. And other weeks, there's much more of a lull in workload. And this, this, this variation in workload is exogenous. Another nice aspect of this particular setting is that some of this workload, this variation in workload, is anticipated. Because the way it works with, with insurance claims is that clients first call in to notify MassMutual of a claim that they want to submit. But then MassMutual still has about four to six weeks before the claim actually comes in. So in a week in which there are many claims notifications, many calls of clients saying, we want to submit a claim, claims examiners know that about four to six weeks out, the workload, the actual workload, is going to be a lot higher because a greater number of claims is going to be filed and is, is going to come in. So we use this, this aspect to really study both time use when actual workload is high, when a great number of claims are being filed, but we also look at anticipated workload. Do we see that workers start to work ahead to try to get ahead of the curve? So with that, I'll start to show you the first of uh, a couple of very, very big league graphs. So let me try to walk you through it. The first line that I'd like you to look at is the red line. And this red line indicates the level of anticipated workload. It represents the number of claims notifications, so calls of clients, coming in on average per claims examiner in a given week. The other line I'd like you to look at is the blue line, and this is indicating the level of productivity of claims examiners. It indicates the number of tasks that claims examiners complete on average in a given week. And so what we're looking for here is really co-movement of the blue and the red line. Because if these, the blue and the red line move together, this means that when anticipated workload is high, we see that claims examiners actually get more work done. They're being more productive. And indeed, there is a substantial amount of co-movement of these lines. Just to talk you through the rest of the graph as well, you see some black vertical bars. These indicate when an examiner leaves. And of course, when examiners leave, this automatically, this mechanically increases workload per examiner because there are fewer people to do the work. The green line captures a subjective assessment of the strain that the department was under as given or as gauged by the managers of the departments. But for most of the talk, I'd really like you to look at the co-movement of the red and the blue line. And again, as said, these red and blue lines suggest that when anticipated workload is high, claims examiners actually work ahead. They get more work done to try and get ahead of the curve. And we see something very similar and even more striking when we look at actual workload. So here the red line indicates the number of claims files that come in per examiner in a given week. And we see that in a week in which actual workload is high, claims examiners complete a lot more tasks. And so we wanted to see if we can verify this in a, in a regression framework. Uh, that's what these tables show. And indeed, we see that in a week in which either actual workload is high or anticipated workload is high, claims examiners step up their game and complete more tasks. So, what this means is that, one, examiners get more work done when workload is high. In fact, when one extra claim is filed for, per examiner in a given week, claims examiners complete six to seven more tasks. Secondly, we see that in a week in which anticipated workload is high, so in a week in which, for instance, one extra claim notification comes in per examiner, examiners complete about six extra tasks. So we see that Indeed, there is a, a large productivity response to actual workload, and we see that workers work ahead when anticipated workload is high. Next, we want to see whether examiners actually get more sloppy. It might be that they, they get more work done, but the work is of a lesser quality. And in particular, what we, what we care about is whether tasks are completed in a timely manner. So here you see a very similar squiggly graph. The red line, again, indicates anticipated workload, but the blue line here indicates the number of tasks that are completed by the due date. 
And so you see a substantial amount of co-movement here, as well as when we look at the co-movement of the number of tasks that are completed by the due date and actual workload. So again, when we check the correlations of anticipated and actual workload with the number of tasks that are completed past their due date, we see that indeed when actual workload is higher, there is a greater number of tasks that are completed past their due date. But keep in mind that when actual or anticipated workload is higher, we also see examiners completing more tasks. And it turns out that the percentage of tasks that are completed past their due date actually does not increase. So the timeliness with which examiners complete their work, do their work, does not decrease when actual workload is higher. And in fact, in response to anticipated workload, the timeliness of the work of the examiners actually goes up for a little bit. So we see that in response to actual and anticipated workload, productivity goes up, or the amount of output that a claims examiners produce goes up, and the quality does not decrease. So how do they do it? Do, do we see, simply see that claims examiners work longer hours? Do we see overtime go up? Well, here we see, again, the, the by now familiar red line. The red line anti, uh, indicates anticipated workload in this case. The green line is slightly different. It here indicates the number of tasks that claims examiners complete in a given week. The blue line here indicates overtime. So again, what we'd like to see is some co-movement of the blue and the red graph. Because if that's the case, then in a week in which anticipated workload is high, workers work longer hours. They work more overtime hours. And indeed, we do see some co-movement, though it's a bit messy. We see even slightly less co-movement when we look at actual workload, the red line in this graph, and overtime, the blue line in this graph. So when we just verify in a, in a regressional framework, we find that yes, when actual workload is higher, workers work over time a bit more, but it's only a bit more. So in a week in which one extra claim is filed per examiner, we see that examiners only work about eight more minutes. That's not a lot. Doing a quick back of the envelope calculation, in a week with average workload, examiners complete about 57 tasks. And all of them work pretty much full time. So they need about 40 minutes to complete one extra task. So these eight extra minutes that they work over time would go only about, uh, towards only about a fifth of a task that they can complete. So the extra time that we see them work does not go very far towards explaining the extra amount of output that we see examiners complete. Well, what about leave? Do we simply see that examiners uh, take fewer leave hours, go on vacation less or postpone vac vacations? So here, the red line again indicates anticipated workload. The dark blue line indicates total leave hours. And the light blue line indicates what we refer to as unexpected leave hours. So this is really sick leave and personal leave. Here, what we'd, we'd like to look at is really if we see that when there's a spike in the red line, that we see a, a valley or a lull in the blue line. And it's admittedly hard to read, but there might be some of that, though it's not very clear. Uh, and when we look at actual workload, just from casual observation, there might be some co-movement. When there's a spike, there might be a lull, but it's a bit hard to tell from the graphs. So we checked in a regression framework, and we find that when actual workload is, is higher, Yes, we do see that workers consume fewer leave hours. They, they go on vacation less. In fact, in a week in which one extra claim is filed per examiner, we see that examiners on average take one hour fewer vacation hours. So there is a bit more of a response in terms of, of vacation or, or leave hours. We also start to see some stress creeping up because in a, in a week in which examiners uh, have to deal with, on average, one extra claims file, we also see that unexpected leave, so sick leave and personal leave, goes up by about 10 minutes. So all in all, if actual workload is higher and also if anticipated workload is higher, we do see that leave hours go down a little bit. But again, not by nearly enough to explain the increase in output that we see in response to higher actual and anticipated workload. So to recap, we see that when actual workload is high, output is greater. 
We also see that in response to higher anticipated workload, workers work ahead and they start to, to already complete more tasks ahead of the anticipated hump in workload. Some of this increase in output can be explained by examiners working longer hours. We see a slight increase in overtime and we see that they take fewer leave hours. But again, the extra hours that they are, that they spend at work, only goes towards about explaining 25% of the increase in output. So the other 75% is not explained at all. And so this is where we'd really like to look at what do workers do when they're at work? Do they serve less and do they work more? So do they use the time they're, that they're at work more effectively or do they go about their work more efficiently? Do they seek help of the colleague before they get stuck and lose an hour on trying to figure it out themselves? So this is what we're looking at right now. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have the results of that yet. So I'm hoping very much to be back here next year and be able to tell you more about that. Thank you very much. Whether one of the way, is it possible that one of the ways workers uh, did the extra work is they also did it at home? In other words, in the digital economy, work and life are more porous, and so when you don't have as much to do at work, you do more of your life things, and when you have more work at home, you do more of your work things. Is there a way for you all to look at that? So the, so the beautiful thing is of the data that we have is we actually see how many hours workers are logged in. Logged into the, um, the firm system so we actually know how many hours they can work. And that's what we look at also in terms of um, looking at overtime that they work. So those are actual hours that they're logged into the system and can do work, be that uh, at, in the office or at home. That's in, yeah, taken into account when, when we see so this, this slight increase in overtime that's taking into account that workers are simply logged into the system and, and able to do their work uh, for a slightly longer time. One more quick question right over here. Do you have logs of the work that they actually do? Yes, yes, we have very granular. Can you see whether they're surfing or not? Yes, we can. So unfortunately, we're still cleaning that, that data, which is why I'm saying I am hope to be back here next year and, and be able to tell you about that. But yes, we see uh, what websites they visit, what they do online, and, and how much time they spend on each of those activities. Uh, so it's a, a very detailed understanding of, of what workers actually do when they're at work. Did you use a big <laughs> <laughs> No, no. <laughs> but that would have been helpful, yes. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Irina. Thanks.